Livy Drusilla. Empress, political strategist, kingmaker. Livy Drusilla was the third wife of Emperor Augustus of Rome, mother of Emperor Tiberius, and grandmother of Emperor Claudius. She was one of the great women in history who achieved prominence living in the shadow of a strong leader, serving silently as his advisor and confidant. Supportive of her husband's reform policies, as well as turning a blind eye to his infidelities, Livy served the empire as a symbol of the loyal Roman wife. Yet behind the scenes at the imperial court she spent much of her adult life ensuring her son's future as heir to the throne, whether he wanted it or not. If you have not heard of Empress Livia of Rome, Sky Atlantic has a new drama series called, Domina, that depicts the life and trials of this powerful woman in ancient Roman history. Much aligned in an early BBC series, Domina seeks to reframe Livia's involvement in public affairs as evidence of her intelligence and keen political engagement. The show airs on Sky Atlantic and now, in Europe and the UK in May 2021, and is slated for release later in the year in the United States. If you get a chance to watch Domina, please leave comments below to let us all know how you think she is being portrayed. While much of her early life remains unknown, which is not uncommon for women from that time, Livia was born January 30, 58 or 59 BCE, probably in Rome. Before she married Augustus, she had been married to Tiberius Claudius Nero, a member of the very old and prominent Claudian clan. Unfortunately, her husband did not choose his political alliances wisely. He not only sided with the conservative branch of the Senate, but also supported Mark Antony at Philippi. Livia would follow her husband, with their son Tiberius in tow, into exile in Greece, returning to Rome in 39 BCE. She would have two children by Tiberius Nero. The future Emperor Tiberius, born in 42 BCE and Nero Claudius Drusus, father of the future emperor, Claudius. Livy was pregnant with another son when she divorced her husband to marry Augustus in 37 or 38 BCE. This marriage would unite two prominent clans. The Julians, the family of Augustus, and the Claudians, the family of Livia by marriage. For Augustus, this marriage was for all intended purposes, a wise decision. Livy would be a strong supporter of her husband while maintaining a low profile. And for the people of Rome, she would be seen as a model of old-fashioned propriety with intelligence, beauty, and dignity. Since Augustus respected Livia's opinion, she was considered by many, inside and outside the imperial court, as having a significant influence on her husband's administrative affairs. She was also considered very generous, encouraging Augustus to be merciful to his political opponents. Unfortunately there were those within the imperial court that had other opinions and who came to portray Livia in a negative light even going so far as to portray her as a murderess of children and husbands. Although she always claimed to have little impact on her husband's decisions, history says otherwise. The two were a partnership, with her intelligence, connections and influence, she served him as a trusted counsellor and advisor till the end. One contemporary historian describes a loving and trusting relationship between Livia and Augustus. At the end, the Emperor's last words were to live mindful of our wedlock Livia, and farewell. And he died kissing her.
This detail may be fictionalized, but it represents Livia's double role as a chaste and dutiful Roman wife, while having all the political savvy needed to see that her eldest son Tiberius became emperor, and she the dowager empress. Like many Roman wives, Livia's official duties were mostly concerned with domestic matters. Overseeing the running of the house and the education of her children and grandchildren. Yet as wife of Augustus Caesar, she had much more power and influence. And while she always remained supportive of her husband, her lifelong primary concern was to ensure that her eldest son, Tiberius, would be heir to the throne. The untimely deaths of Tiberius's stepbrothers, Lucius and Gaius, whom some maliciously say Livia had a part in, brought him to the forefront in the competition for emperor. Even though Augustus was less than willing to name Tiberius as his heir, while Livia worked to ensure her eldest son would become emperor, she never seemed to have actually discussed the matter with Tiberius himself. Even though he had distinguished himself in both politics and in the field, Tiberius felt completely out of place in the imperial house. And when he fulfilled his mother's ambition as Tiberius Caesar Augustus, he came to be remembered as a dark, reclusive and summer ruler who never really desired to be emperor. When Augustus died on the 19th of August, 14 CE, Tiberius was hailed the new emperor. And at first, Livia and Tiberius appeared to get along with each other in the new roles in the empire. Livia exercised unofficial but very real power as Dowager Empress. But eventually, Tiberius became resentful of his mother's political status, particularly against the idea that it was she who had given him the throne. It came to a point where, whenever the Senate wanted to bestow any type of divine honors upon Livia, Tiberius vetoed them all. Later, he vetoed all of the honors that the Senate had granted her even after her death. And he even cancelled the fulfillment of her will. Livy Drusilla would die at the age of 86 in 29 CE. Her son would outlive her by eight years. Livia's character was under constant fire, from the time she became part of the imperial family to the time of her death, and one way of showing this is through the abundant murder accusations that were brought against her. But today, with the new Sky Atlantic show, Domina, we can now say that, history remembers Empress Livia as a powerful woman who stood beside her emperor husband as a devoted Roman wife, but still was able to remove all obstacles that would have prevented her son Tiberius from sitting on the throne as emperor. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more videos on the fabulous, fierce and feisty women in history.